After doing our drawing, we come and we start with a, a wash in the sky. We've done this before a couple of times now, a graded wash bringing cobalt blue um, a little stronger in the top and becoming very um, light towards the horizon. We bring this all the way down to the, the field, the top of the field of wildflowers that we're going to paint next. and. We start that field with a, a light wash of pale green uh, at springtime in the desert. And this picture is, is rather striking because of all the flowers that are blooming simultaneously. It's quite an event in the desert when you get a, a big rain, a, a, everything starts to bloom. And it's very bright colors in an otherwise kind of drab uh, brown and olive green environment. But it's springtime in this painting and so we're creating a graded wash made up of these zigzagging strokes that are creating a feeling of surface to the field uh, using a deeper green as we come lower and it's a graded wash because it's starting light up at top and getting a little darker as it comes down. While it's still wet, we're going to do some splatter. And this is effective for this type of scene. The, um, the colors that we're kind of splattering onto the painting are dissolving a little bit. But uh, when it dries, they have the appearance of flowers floating on the field. And in this case, we're using uh, various colors. You notice the reds right away. We're adding some yellows and we'll also be placing some violet color on top of the green. All of this is to give a feeling of repeated shapes, the shapes being these tiny, tiny flowers. The shapes themselves are bigger in the foreground and as they move back they're getting smaller so that we see uh, diminishing shapes as they go back and the ones in front are going to be quite bold and quite bright so that we feel they're almost uh, in our face, like we, we can almost smell them, they're so close. I'm introducing a little bit of a shadow color here to again bring some depth into the field that we're painting. This is wet, dry into wet, I would say the paper is not fully dry yet and this violet, deeper violet color is being added while the paper is still wet. I'm using alizarin crimson and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And we'll stay in this section until we're finished. It's a big part of the painting, more than half of the painting. And so spending time here until we're relatively satisfied is a good idea. This uh, this way of bringing out a field is rather fun to do because you you get to splash color, you get to uh, watch the wet on wet uh, color work together, and then on top of that you can place some of these more opaque flowers. So the slope is pretty clear and it's drying now so I'm going to be placing the distant mountain. This is a grayer blue uh, using cobalt but a bit of red with it. The red I believe is cadmium red and I'm getting a, a sharp outline to the distant mountains and I'm going to be grading that wash as well. You see that dark I'm adding now. A little darker where the mountains are coming down to the field. Instantly this field is kind of coming forward towards us and creates a, a big sweeping dive towards us which is effective. So we need this to dry a little bit and then we can place uh, the bushes that are growing on either side of the either side of the, um, the field. These bushes are, I'm not sure, mesquite or sage or maybe something else, but they again that provide a backdrop for the for the distant, I'm sorry, for the field in front of it. I'm using a, this, a scumbling technique, a 
uh, dry brush technique to get the shape. The, uh, the shape on the lower part is very bulky, but when it goes up, uh, you get skinny branches and these very fine, fine, almost feathery leaves. And that's what I'm de trying to describe with dry brush. I'm also trying to create a bit of variety because you see they're almost uh, symmetrical or repeating on opposite sides of the painting, so I don't want it to be too much of a repeat. I'm trying to give this one a little more height, a little bigger appearance, so that the, um, they feel uh, like there's some variety there. And again, the field is even advancing closer now. Those bright greens on the top ridge are starting to pop and we're feeling sun wash over the whole scene. So we're ready for the cacti.